So let's see what iOS 4.2 has to offer. iOS 4.2 will be available sometime in November to all iOS devices, the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. While the iPhone and iPod Touch already gained most of the features in the iOS 4.0 update, the iPad was left alone in iOS 3 since neither iOS 4.0 or iOS 4.1 welcomed the iPad. This is about to change with iOS 4.2. The iPhone and iPod Touch took advantage of multitasking, folders, and much more with iOS 4.0. Now the iPad can get these features with the upcoming iOS 4.2. So what should you expect to find in iOS 4.2? That is what this video is all about. We will be taking a look at a third generation iPod Touch armed with the beta version of iOS 4.2. Hopefully this will give you a head start when iOS 4.2 is released to the general public. On an important note, make sure you are running iOS 10.1 on iTunes. If you do not have 10.1, then you will not be able to upgrade to iOS 4.2. To get 10.1, simply in iTunes, head over to the Help menu and select Check for Updates. iTunes will then check for updates and you should install any needed updates if there are any. Once you have 10.1, all you need to do is just wait for iOS 4.2 to be released. Now for iPad users, some features you will be getting are not going to be described in this video because we will be focusing on iPhones and iPods. Some features were given to iPod and iPhone users in iOS 4.0. To see these features, check out my video all about iOS 4.0. I'll post the link in the description and in a video response. Now back to iOS 4.2. The first big change is on-screen volume controls. To access these, simply double tap your home button to reveal the multitasking pane. Then swipe over to reveal the orientation lock and the music controls. Swipe one more time to reveal the new volume control. Just slide the slider to change your volume. I myself think this is a total waste um, since there are volume controls on the side of the device here that are very accessible and usable. So I would much rather like to see this be a brightness setting um, since that's a little harder to change because since you have to go into your settings and then click on brightness and then you can change your brightness. Um, I myself would find it um, a lot better use of space if that was a brightness setting. So hopefully Apple will add that in the future as well. The next change, although very subtle, is in the Voice Memos app. Voice Memos app is right here. As you can see, they changed the icon. It used to be um, just a black icon with the microphone. Now it's a blue icon with the microphone. And that's basically all they changed in the Voice Memos app, just the icon. Nothing in the Voice Memos app is different. The next change is in the Notes app. If you go to Settings and scroll down to your App Settings, you'll notice that Notes is now in the list. If you select Notes, you'll see they can now change the fonts of your notes. So I'll show you what each of these fonts look like. First one is Chalkboard. That's what chalkboard looks like. My camera will focus. There we go. We'll choose the next font. And the next font is the original font. Marker felt is um, the original font that was always there. So they added Helvetica and chalkboard. So it's pretty nice. Um, I myself like the chalkboard font a lot better than the other ones. I find it's a lot easier to read um, while still looking uh, somewhat cool. So that's the notes app. Another change is parental controls. So if we head back in the settings, we'll go to general, whoops, and restrictions. 
you'll notice there are two more restrictions. One of them is deleting apps. If you see that. You can now um, restrict users from deleting apps from your iPod. So if you have children or something using your device um, and you don't want them to accidentally delete anything, that will be a good setting. And another thing that was added is under Game Center, adding friends. You can now, whoops, you can now restrict um, users from adding friends to your Game Center account. All right. Now the next change, um, it's not very big, but it's in Game Center. If you open up a Game Center game, so we'll open up Game Center, and I'll open Field Runners. And Game Center will welcome you. There's a little message that popped down. I'll close that, that cancel sound. But a little message will pop up when you open a Game Center game. If you were offline and then now you're online and you open a game, um, a little pop up will come up that'll welcome you back to Game Center. Now the next change is in Safari. I'll open up Safari. And. We'll open up a website like Lifehacker. Now this change allows you to um, search for certain words within a website you're viewing. So via the search bar, just type in the word you want to search for. And then near the bottom, you'll notice it says on this page, 10 matches. Just scroll down. And then you'll see an option, find the word you typed in. Select that. And it will highlight the occurrences in the web page. Now on the bottom, you can scroll through them by clicking next. So I'll hit next, and it'll go to the next word. Next, it'll go to the next one. And hit done on the bottom to get rid of that. So, um, wording, word find, um, another pretty cool change. But probably the two biggest changes and most anticipated changes are AirPlay and AirPrint. In AirPlay, when you are playing a video, such as in YouTube, we'll open up a video, if you have um, something to stream the video with, you'll see a little AirPlay icon down here next to your volume control. If you select that, it'll give you options of where to air to play it to. So basically, AirPlay is streaming the video, or you can also stream music um, through either an AirPort or um, your Mac or your Apple TV. So that is also a cool feature. I'm not able to demonstrate right that right now because I do not have any of those set up so I can't demonstrate that but it is an option available if you have either an airport or an Apple TV and the last thing I want to show is AirPrint um, obviously ever since the iPhone and iPod Touch came out people have been wanting to be able to print stuff uh, especially with the iPad, too, since people use it more as a mobile computer, a tablet computer. So, they've been wanting to print stuff. Apple has listened. Um, but although it is very restrictive to what you can print to, but let me just demonstrate it. I'll demonstrate it in Safari. So we'll keep this Lifehacker post open. And you'll notice that on the bottom, there used to be a plus button. Well, that now is a share button. And it has the same options as before. Add bookmark, add a home screen, or mail the link. But now is print. If you click on print, it will bring up the printer options. And if you notice, if I select printer, it will not find any printer. 
you either need to have an AirPrint compatible printer, which under the tech specs of the printer it'll say AirPrint compatible, or you need to have a Mac with AirPrint on it. So you have you need to have either of those. If you don't have either of those, then you can't take advantage of this. So that is a bummer. Um, but also I have I will be posting another video out that will go over this app right here, this red app, Print and Share. And so Print and Share will be a nice alternative. It is a paid app, but it works very nicely. And it will be a nice alternative if you do not have if you do not have a Mac or if you do not wish to invest in an AirPrint compatible printer. Um, print and Share is uh, I think it's five dollars, but I'm not for I'm not sure. But I will post a video describing AirPrint. Um, well I mean I said AirPrint. I will post a video describing Print and Share. Uh, I use that a lot. It's a very nice app. It allows you to print web pages, emails photos, and contacts. Alright, so that is basically iOS 4.2 in a nutshell. Obviously for iPod and iPhones, it does not bring too many new features other than AirPrint and AirPlay. But for iPad, you will also get new features such as folders and multitasking. And other features like um, Wi-Fi improvements, and iBooks. So, uh, now hopefully when iOS 4.2 is released, you'll have a better understanding of what is new in this um, firmware. So remember to subscribe to get the latest videos demonstrating the latest Apple releases. Until iOS 4.2 comes out, good luck.